Welcome to the Isle of May. My name is Jose Lauf Monfort and together with co-authors Byron Morgan, Mike Harris, Sarah Wallace and Stephen Freeman, we have presented the model to study multi-species synchrony in a demographic parameter, adult survival, using mass recapture information from seabirds that breed here. I will explain a bit about the model, but first let's have a look at the impressive seabird colonies of the Isle of May. The Isle of May is located in the North Sea, on the southeast coast of Scotland. This place is very special because the seabird colonies here have been studied since the 70s. The information collected from censuses and ring birds makes a very interesting and valuable long-term dataset. At least 10 species of marine birds breed here at the Isle of May. Some of them breed on the cliffs, others on the grassy slopes on top of the island. The colonies are spectacular, with tens of thousands of birds gathering here every breeding season. In our study, we were interested in the three species of oaks. The common guillemot, the razorbill, and the Atlantic Puffin. And we were interested in these oaks because they have rather similar ecology. And in particular the ones breeding here at the Isle of May have largely overlapping distribution throughout the year and are therefore likely to be exposed to the same environmental stochasticity. So it, in, it is reasonable to expect some degree of synchrony on the fluctuations of their demographic parameters. Oaks, as many other seabirds, are long-lived animals, and their annual adult survival is normally high. These species visit land only for breeding. The oaks from the Isle of May disperse in winter over broad areas of the North Sea, and maybe even into the North Atlantic for some of the species. All three have similar feeding habits, they dive underwater and swim in pursuit of fish, and use the same species to feed their chicks, mainly lesser sand eel and sprat. Guillemots and razorbills lay eggs directly on narrow ledges on the cliffs, without a nest, in tightly packed colonies. Puffins, on the other hand, nest in burrows excavated in the grassy slopes. We were interested in studying synchrony in adult survival of these oaks. But in order to do that, you need to have individuals that you can identify and monitor over many years. In this marsh reside study, birds breeding in front of permanent hides were captured and marked with color rings. It's the combination of colors in both legs that identifies the individual. But of course, first you have to catch the birds in order to feed the rings. In the case of puffins, they can be found deep down the burrows. Then, year after year, during the breeding season, when the birds are back to the Isle of May, the cliffs and burrows are scanned from the heights, looking for birds with rings. These species show high sight fidelity. Even if they disperse over large areas in winter, they will still come back to breed here at the Isle of May. For our study, we used marsh reside information collected this way since 1984 for these three species, so 24 years of data until 2008. In total, 543 puffins, 831 guillemots, and 153 razorbills were marked during this period. So we've seen how the marsh reside data was collected. Now, how did we analyze it in our study? The main idea behind our work was to jointly analyze survival for these species. Survival has been studied before for the species that breed here, but ours is the first analysis that brings several species into a single model. 
For each species, the yearly survival probability varies from year to year and will depend on several, probably many, factors that may include food availability or winter conditions. What our model brings is a way of quantifying the degree of synchrony among several sympatric species of this year-to-year -year variation in adult survival. In order to do this, we adapted the framework originally developed for single species multicolony synchrony to our multi species situation. We start from the standard open population mass recapture model with time dependent recapture probability and introduce normally distributed random effects in the logistic regression that models survival. We use the variance of the random effects to characterize the year to year variation in survival, but we do it in a very specific way. The model has year random terms that are common to all species and year random terms that are specific to each species. A species specific index of synchrony is then calculated by dividing the common variance by the total variance for each species. We analyzed our data within a Bayesian framework, which is very convenient when working with random effects. We used Markov chain Monte Carlo sampling to obtain samples from the posterior distributions with program wind bugs. Our analysis shows that the guillemots, razorbills and puffins that breed at the Isle of May show a high degree of synchrony in adult survival, with the common variance representing between 66 and 73 percent of the total variance depending on the species. Now, we do have some hypotheses about factors that affect adult survival of these birds. So we can try to characterize part of this year-to-year -year variation using covariates. In this case, uh, we can study synchrony of the residual variance, that is, the part that is not explained by the covariates. We can also calculate the fraction of both synchronous and asynchronous variances that are accounted for by these covariates, which represents their contribution to synchronizing and desynchronizing survival. For our system at the Isle of May, we introduced two environmental covariates commonly used in the study of seabirds in the North Sea, which are the Winter North Atlantic Oscillation Index and the sea surface temperature in an area around the colony. We also include one-year time lag versions of these variables to account for delayed indirect effects. Our results indicate that these environmental covariates account for about 25% of the synchronous variance and roughly between 40 and 80 percent of the asynchronous one depending on the species. That is, these climatic variables are acting simultaneously as synchronizing and desynchronizing agents for adult survival of these birds. This is probably achieved through different indirect causation paths, some of them influencing the three species in the same way, others impacting them differently. The method is readily applicable to other sympatric species and ecosystems, as long as you have long-term mark recapture data available. It can provide insight into how species that share one area respond similarly or differently to changes in their environment and help disentangle the sources of these uh, differences. The indices of synchrony and asynchrony will help develop further hypotheses about similarities and differences in this species ecology, such as, in the case of the oaks at the Isle of May, the overlap of the wintering areas, of which we know very little.